So what was great about Twilight Zone's first season as many of the programs could be told around the campfire and still be just as effective. Now, this story, uh, I first heard of this around the campfire, actually. Somebody told the story from the episode, almost uh, not say verbatim, but with the same uh, plot points. And uh, Searling really, really headed out of the park in here. And Inger Stevens has such a good performance, she should have been nominated for an Emmy, but uh, she was bypassed. So this is the episode known as The Hitchhiker. The 16th episode of Twilight Zone, which originally aired on uh, CBS January 22nd, 1960, is based on Lucille Fletcher's radio play, The Hitchhiker. It's frequently listed among the series by greatest episodes. And of course, the feature music uh, uh, included Bernard Herrmann's score for the original radio version of The Hitchhiker. Now this one, according to Searling's narration, her name is Nat Adams. She's 27 years old. Her occupation, buyer in a New York department store. At present, on vacation, driving cross-country into 2LA from Manhattan. Now, Nan Adams, on a cross-country road trip from NYC to LA, gets a flat tire on U.S. Route 11 in Pennsylvania and survives losing control of the car and skidding onto the shoulder. The mechanic she has called to come put a spare tire on comments that he's surprised she survived, saying you shouldn't have called for a mechanic. Somebody should have called for a hearse. He directs her to follow him into town, where he will supply her with a new tire. As she is driving from the site of her blowout, Nan notices a shabby and strange-looking man hitchhiking. Later, as she's preparing to leave the service station in town, she again sees him, but the mechanic does not see him when she mentions it. Unnerved, she drives away. As she continues her trip, Nan sees the same hitchhiker thumbing for a ride again in Virginia and at several other points in her journey. She grows increasingly frightened of him, when she stops at a railroad crossing for an oncoming train, the man is situated on the other side of the tracks. She decides to drive ahead, but the car stalls on the tracks. She manages to restart the vehicle and back up just as the train speeds past. She is now convinced that the hitchhiker is trying to kill her. She continues to drive, becoming more and more afraid, stopping only when necessary. Every time she stops, however, the hitchhiker is there, always ahead of her. Now, uh, Leonard Strong, in an almost wordless performance uh, it was a very very uh, perfect uh, display of creeping terror now Nan again takes a side road to New Mexico but got, gets stranded when she runs out of gas she reaches a gas station on foot but it's closed although she rouses the proprietor from bed he refuses to reopen and sell her gas due to late hour Nan is eventually startled by a sailor on his way back to San Diego from leave eager for protection for the hitchhiker she offers to drive the sailor all the way to his destination. He gladly accepts and persuades the station attendant to provide gas. As they drive together to discuss their mutual predicaments, she sees the hitchhiker on the road and swerves towards him. The sailor who cannot see him questions her driving. She admits she was trying to run over the hitchhiker. The sailor begins to fear for his safety and leaves her, despite her efforts to have him stay, even going so far as offering to go out with him. Now in Arizona, Nance uh, stops to call her mother in Manhattan, the woman who answers the phone says Mrs. Adams is in a hospital, having suffered a nervous breakdown after finding out that her daughter, Nan, died in Pennsylvania six days ago when the car she was driving blew a tire and overturned. Nan realizes the truth. She didn't survive the accident in Pennsylvania and the hitchhiker is none other than a personic evocation of debt. Patiently and persistently waiting for her to realize that she's been dead all along. She loses all emotion, concern, and feels empty. Nan returns to the car and looks at a vanity mirror on the visor. Instead of her reflection, she sees the hitchhiker who says, I believe you're going my way. Now, closing narration, Nan Adams, age 27. She was driving to California to L.A. She didn't make it. There was a detour through the Twilight Zone. Now, in the original play by Fletcher, the character of Nan was a man named Ronald Adams. The hitchhiker was first presented on the Orson Welles Show in 41, Philip Morris's Playhouse in 42, Suspense in 42, and A Mercury, Mercury Summer Theater in 46. All these radio productions were live performances starring Orson Welles as uh, the Ronald Adams character. Now, Nance Carr is a light-colored 1959 Mercury Montclair uh, four-door, hardtop that had the inside rearview mirror and front door vent windows removed. However, the scene where Nance swerved towards Hitchhiker, the car shown as a dark, 57 Ford Custom or Fairlane, four-door sedan. Now, 
When the teleplay was adapted for radio on Twilight Zone, Radio Dramas in 2002, the role of Dan Adams was played by all people, Charlie's Angels, uh, Kate Jackson. Now, why the episode is effective, you don't really know if the hitchhiker, who he is, is it all in your mind? Is he death? Is he is he a specter? Is Dan Adams' character a ghost? Or the other people that encounter on the road are ghosts? Once the episode is done, it all comes in a factor. Yes, the hitchhiker is, or is death, or the person that leads you to the afterworld, and she's already dead, but sometimes the spirit doesn't want to accept it. But I think what the, the best thing is very open-ended. Uh, when we're saying a top 10 Twilight Zone episodes, uh, what makes Twilight Zone uh, what it is can be found in this episode. The script is very strong. The music is very strong. Uh, the supporting actors, all of them are known factors in what you call the, the TV episodic uh, uh, shows of the time. There was actors in this who had been in Westerns before. Perry Mason, Lou Gallo was in it, a very underrated actor. Every time I saw him in a part, he, uh, he put, it to, put it together. Uh, and um, Adam Williams, as a sailor, uh, plays a, uh, a very strong character to serve the conscience of the public. Now, uh, Inger Stevens, of course, uh, was a big uh, actress from Sweden and a former Golden Globe uh, uh, winner who had appeared on uh, many, many shows uh, throughout the year. And she also appeared in the first uh, video version of Twilight Zone in the lateness of the hour. A very, very uh, strong performance. Now, she did uh, win uh, several recognitions for her TV work, especially for The Farmer's Daughter, and 63, she won a Golden Globe for Best TV Star uh, Female. And what's kind of ironic, ladies and gentlemen, uh, The Hitchhiker, uh, Leonard Strong is pretty well that's his most well-known role. Now, uh, he was in a lot of uh, B-movies uh, through the years and uh, became kind of a strong character actor. But uh, it's kind of strange, all these major B-movies he did, the, the Hitchhiker, that's his most well-known role. And he also appeared in Alfred Hitchcock uh, Presents, uh, uh, the episode The Cure, which was written by Robert Block of Psycho fame. Now, uh, the, the hitchhiker basically, uh, the, uh, the television role, again, a top 10 episode, but like I said, he just basically was playing himself. Uh, now, Strong is also seen in one of a half dozen second long scenes used at the start of every one of the 30 DVDs in the CBS DVD five season collection, The Twilight Zone, the definitive uh, edition. But like I said, his finger outstretched saying, you're going my way. Like I said, that's that's a key line of the 1960s for television. Uh, almost up there with lines from The Fugitive or Star Trek or whatever. And like I said, this episode is better, best watched with the lights off in the summer after the sun goes down. It's that creepy. It's a midnight episode. And uh, it was recently shown again on uh, City TV and syndication. Boys, oh boys, ladies and gentlemen, that... Uh, that brought back a lot of good memories uh, for uh, Canadian TV watchers. The first time I saw it, I saw the cut episode. When I saw the, the full episode, I just found it extremely tremendous. Because there's elements of psycho in this too. Uh, because, you know, a woman trying to escape and uh, trying to get help from different people. There's a lot of perils, but Inger Stevens, you would never think she was from Sweden. And, you know, she hides her accent well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of the classic episode of TZ, The Hitchhiker. If you like what you're doing here, what are episodic reviews of what some people consider the best anthology series of all time, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share.